glories unto me as living sacrifices. These are the days of a transformation. These are the days that they that seek me will find me. Search for me with all of your hearts, for I will be found. The day that you seek me with all your heart, you will find me. You will find me. I'm my, I'm here my people. The eyes of the Lord are over the righteous. My ears are open right now to your cry. Yeah. Go ahead and cry to me for a minute. Come on, Lord. Come on, lift your hands and Lord, search my heart tonight. God, let this spirit of truth go in me tonight. Lord, let this love of the truth go into my, into my heart, into my soul. God, reestablish me upon this foundation of Jesus Christ. God, oh God of Abraham and of Isaac, God of Jacob and Moses and all the prophets, oh, God, get me into this. God, put me upon this foundation. Lord, search my heart. Get out. Hindrances out of my life. Break up my fallow grounds. For it's time to seek the Lord. God, let there be a time of fasting, a time of mourning, a time of prayer, a time of crying and sighing, Lord. Until, Lord, you can get everything out of me, Lord. Purge my spirit.
God, you get rid of this natural man. This natural man can't receive nothing from God. His foolishness and spiritually discerned. But God, give me a spiritual mind. Right now, lift your hands and say, Lord, give me a spiritual mind. Give me a mind of the spirit. Give me spiritual ears. Give me spiritual eyes. Help me to see in the spirit. Help me to hear in the spirit. Help me to pray in the spirit. Help me to
looking out these auto places, going on strike. You know what it is? What God told us. He said, a recession is coming upon America. A recession is coming upon us. And from here on out, from 2019, man, things has been going downhill. Going to get worse because we're in the last days now. Ain't it? Man, I, I, I was thinking, well, it's going to get worse. God is trying to bring us into something. Because he wants to preserve us. He wants to give us something to help us to get through. Not something that's coming, but it's already on us. You can feel it. It's depressing just to watch the news now. Isn't it? It's like the dam has burst. And all these things. But he saw that darkness was covering this whole earth. And the devil was looking over his shoulder and hissing and giving a hideous grin. And all of a sudden, Jesus grabbed the devil by the collar and hit him off. And all those handmaids that was fenced in couldn't do nothing for God. Servants. All of a sudden, Jesus went and got a, a big key. Oh, and, and when he got this great big key, he opened the gate. And all those handmaids and servants start pouring out. And they start going forth everywhere in the visions. The scene changed. He saw fire, liquid fire, like oil was being poured out. And all of these people began to go forth in a prophetic spirit. The word was pouring out of them like liquid fire. Nothing, it was, it was not, yea, I would say, for thus saith the law for the Lord thy God. But it was nothing but the pure flow of the word. The testimony of Jesus was flowing out of him. And he saw him going forth in twos. Two women, a two men, a man, a husband, and a wife. But he saw him going forth, and that's why, you know, the Bible said two is better than one. When two or three are gathered in my name, there am I in the midst. If two shall touch and agree, whatever they ask, I'll bring it to pass. And he saw them going forth as twos, going into hospitals. And they went into the hospitals, and all they did was stand at the door. When they stood at the door, they just spoke the name of Jesus. People that was crippled, people that had tubes in their nose and had needles and in their arms. When they spoke the name of Jesus, they, those people that was afflicted, they began to pull the needles out of their arms. They began to pull the tubes out of their mouth. I'm not talking about the people that spoke the name of Jesus. I'm talking about the, the uh, people themselves. Something come over them. And they themselves began to do these things. And they was healed instantly. I remember in 1975, we was in Jamaica, in a place called, we had left Savannah Lamar and went to Black River. And in Black River, we were out there advertising the meetings. And I told the young man that was with me, I said, let's go in that hospital and let's put some of these posters up and advertise. And we did so. Because 20 miles down the road, they had heard about how that 50,000 people were swept into the kingdom of God. And sicknesses and diseases and crippled and demon possessed people. And God told us back then that was only a sign to what he was going to do in these last days. 
Well, the people in Black River heard about it, and we advertised it, and uh, had this open meeting, Brother Joe, had us sort of put this uh, open platform out there, and it was, uh, well, it was in a graveyard. <laughs> Didn't have nowhere else to put it. It was in a graveyard, the right next, I can't remember if it was in it or right next to it. But it came out by the scores, hundreds, thousands. And, and, and there was one man, he had been in chain. He had been, he used to be, he, he once was a holiness preacher. And he backslid. And the devil took him over. And he was driven into the wilderness. And just like the man in the Bible. And, and nobody went that direction where he was at because he was howling. He would attack people. And when that meat opened in Black River, somehow that man had enough uh, discernment hearing the voice. And he followed that voice. And it brought him to that revival. And when it brought him out to that revival, the man ran me, you know, like a wild man. And, and he heard, and he came at the feet of a brother Terrell and began to weep and began to cry, kiss his feet, and cry. And God drove all them demons out of that man. Let me read in the Bible how that man had thousands of demons in him. This man had thousands, and everybody heard about this. And the crowd increased. And there was every the big old hospital that was there, it was emptied out. The doctor got mad. And the doctor, all of his patients, came to that revival. And they got healed. And they got delivered. And Brother Terrell was in a phone booth trying to make a call back to America. And the doctor got his gun and shot in the phone booth. You know, Brother Terrell, like, we had to take him out and run because the doctor was mad. Say, you done got all of my patients healed. I don't have no more patients. My hospital is empty. There's just one life left. And that's my life. And everything else has been emptied out. And it went from Black River to Spanish Town. And by the time we got to Spanish Town, there was over 100,000 people there. And 400 people healed from blindness. 400 healed from crippleness. 400 healed from uh, death and dumb. 400, and, and I think that was, out of three and a half million people, that was at least a half a million people in four months that got saved. Churches sprung up everywhere. Revivals broke out. And God told us, it was just 12 of us. And God said, this is going to be a sign to what I'm going to do in the last days. This is just a sign to the great outpouring of my spirit in the last days. This is why we're contending for the faith. This is why we're fighting the good fight. Hold it on. And not allowing ourselves to be deceived by these deceivers out there. Amen. And we went from there to the one island after another. And we went from the islands to Central America. And from Central America to South America. And from South America, oh my God, such miracles took place. The people down in uh, Argentina. But until they had such powerful miracles, until the people would try to bow down and kiss his feet, worship him, like they did Paul. Y'all remember? 
Reading about Paul in Acts chapter 14. How that Paul was preaching. A man crippled. And while Paul was preaching this crippled man, Paul sins, saw that he had faith, and he told that crippled man, get out. Man crippled all his life. Deformed. He said, rise up. And, and the man got up and began to walk. And when he did, people were so astonished until they began to call Paul Jupiter and Barnabas Venus. And they began to bring all their precious things and bow down and worship them. And when Paul and Barnabas found out what they was doing, you know, they stopped them. They, they, Paul and Barnabas tore their clothes off. Say, hey, we men just like y'all. We, we, we come to bring to y'all. They, you know, Jesus was so magnified. He was demonstrated. He was manifested in such power, in such miracles, until they thought these men had come down from heaven and become gods in the midst of them. And Paul and Barnabas had to stop them. See, Christ in you is going to be the hope of glory. Christ, it was Christ that was in Stephen's. When Stephen's a man full of faith and full of power and did great signs and miracles among the people and God demonstrated such power, they thought that Stephen's was something, somebody, but Stephen had to let him know. Peter had to let him know, wait, wait, the, the power that you're seeing, we're men just like you. And God's going to do a work and he's going to bring forth such a demonstration, such a power in this last day until people, if you don't set them straight, they're going to look at you and want to worship you. Brother Trail left. Brother Crawford and myself. Brother Crawford taking the service. He said, Brother Blue, he said, in that big old stadium, he said, thousands. He had miracles after miracles. Man, he'd take his hand and punch him in the stomach, and them tumors disappear. He said, you take the morning service. He said, this night service is taking a lot out of me. I said, okay. And I took the morning service. And we had that stadium. You know, there's people coming from everywhere. And God began to work miracles. I remember there was a family of death groups. And they come in every one of them. The mama, the daddy, the brothers, the sisters. They all, their eyes, I mean their ears was unstopped. And God loosed their tongue. And they came and they began to bow. I said, what are they doing? Bow down kissing my feet. They're worshiping you. I said, we're not nothing. It's not us. Tell them it's Jesus. Christ in us is bringing these miracles. Christ in you is going to bring deliverance to this generation. You're nothing. We're nothing. But Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. I know some of you don't believe it, but I'm a witness. I'm a living witness of what God done back then. He said it was only a sign to what he's going to do in these last days. So you better wake up. Get in there and get a dedication. Get in here and let God get you ready. Something Powerful, something mighty. And if you let it pass you, if you're not ready for it, God ain't gonna slow down. He ain't gonna stop. Time is late. He'll find somebody else. You, you, that's right. He ain't gonna wait another 40 years. He's gonna do a work and cut it short in righteousness. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> so we gotta get ready for it. I'm talking about God told us the spoken word. Who are we going to just speak the word? Huh? Y'all believe it? Jesus told them, I'm the living bread. Eat my flesh. Drink my blood. So you can have my life inside of you. He that eateth my flesh and drink my blood shall have my life in the same spirit and the same unction, the same anointing that's in me is going to flow like rivers of living waters 
out of your belly. Jesus said in, in a Matthew and John chapter 15, I am the vine, you are the branches. And as you abide in me, and I am you, you're going to bring forth the same flow, the same power, the same unction, the same anointing is going to flow out of you. What you've seen in me, the works that I do, shall you do also. And greater works than these shall you do, because I go to my Father. That's why Peter said, silver and gold have I not, but such as I have, give I you in the name of Jesus. Rise up and walk, and the man rose up and began to walk. They looked upon Peter and John. Peter said, Why well, look upon us? And though by our power, it's not by our power, but Christ in us has made this man whole. Christ in us has brought deliverance.
I said, if you're not ready for what's fixing to hit, you're going to pass your mind. Father, help me. Help us to stay alert, stay proud, to get ready for what you're fixing to do. You can't tell them that the marriage supper is preparing. Go and tell all those that are bidding to come. One of them said, I can't come. I just married a wife and I can't come. Another one said, I can't come. I got a business I got to take care of. Another one said, they made one excuse after another. He said, go to the highways and hedges and bring them in. God's fixing to go to the highways and hedges and bring in a new crop that's going to be subject, that's going to have power and dominion over the devil that's going to go forth with the same work that was in Christ. He's going to do a quick work. He's going to do it in young people. He's going to move. It's not going to be you, but it's going to be the anointing, the word, the spirit, the testimony of Jesus. It's fixing to be poured out like the world Do you want this? Come on, yes. come on, come on. 